The Green Climate Fund Indigenous Peoples Policy is grounded in promoting and recognizing the needs and contributions of Indigenous peoples to climate change mitigation and adaptation. Sustainable development and rights of Indigenous peoples underpin the mandate and objective of the Green Climate Fund IP Policy. The GCF implements the Indigenous Peoples Policy through a wide range of GCF accredited entities and countries through programs and activities that represent the Indigenous Peoples' interest, which in turn reflect the needs of the community amid climate crisis. The Indigenous People Policy is so important because most of these funding proposals are, are going to touch, are going to affect our uh, communities or Indigenous people territories. What we see now is that we have a recognition as Indigenous people advocacy team. It's not what we want at, um, entirely, but at least um, there is a recognition that there is an Indigenous people advocacy team in all this process. While policies are in place, Challenges abound, especially when it comes to staying true to the Indigenous people's representation in the crafting and implementation of these policies. Participation, for instance, remains difficult, especially in areas where Indigenous peoples have little to no access to information. This has increasingly been difficult, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. And in most of our communities, the access to internet is really low. We have been seeing that um, some government even start to talk about doing consultation with indigenous people in this context. And that was one of the first um, things that indigenous people say that is not possible. Most of the, the meetings are just um, broadcast and you don't have a real connection with the government, with the uh, delegates, uh, we, even with the secretary of the GCF. So we don't have on time the feedback of the community. The pandemic has underscored the challenges to overcome in the process of involving indigenous peoples in crafting policies that ultimately concern them. Generally speaking, indigenous peoples in our country, and I think globally, occupy peripheral spaces, spaces where basic infrastructure of power, let alone internet signals, are the weakest or non-existent. But the pandemic has seriously constrained engagement with the Green Climate Fund and almost reversed some of the momentum uh, in terms of engagement. Inequality severely affects the way the indigenous peoples cope with COVID-19. Communities that rely heavily on farming and pastoral livelihoods now depend on their produce for sustenance. But they worry about not being able to sell their harvest due to lockdowns and market closures. They have also received limited or no government subsidies during the crisis. Despite the compounded challenges of participation amid the pandemic, it is precisely the current crisis that makes Indigenous peoples' participation in the GCF even more urgent. As Indigenous people, self-determination is central to one, giving meaning to the provisions of the policy, and two, pushing efforts towards benefits and access uh, to be realized. For me, I think indigenous people must pull down the policy to the ground and push their demands up from below, from below to project proponents, to national and subnational actors, to accredited entities, and finally, uh, to the Green Climate Fund Secretary. Allocating resources to indigenous peoples' communities require their direct involvement in a more proactive approach in implementing the Green Climate Fund indigenous peoples' policy. So number one, it means indigenous people must internally get organized, must familiarize themselves with the provisions of free plan informed consent, and must make it a standard operation, a standard position to demand whenever a project supported by the Green Climate Fund is brought to their territories, 
The second thing that the policy says is that it will respect uh, customary tenure rights on land for indigenous people, including uh, respect and promotion of indigenous knowledge systems. As indigenous people, we cannot expect outsiders to appreciate and understand and apply customary tenure. We know better. Close cooperation between various actors and the indigenous peoples themselves can ensure the effective implementation of the GCF IP policy and help identify and work on the gaps in order to make sure that the indigenous peoples would benefit from the partnerships. So the focal points need to be supported and uh, resources allocated to the advisory group so that then this policy is given light. I would say the Green Climate Fund should move the access request by indigenous people from aspiration to real life, that they should consider and adopt a dedicated funding arrangement for indigenous people who are remain faithful stewards of our ecosystems and have the lowest carbon footprints. And because they represent the future that the world as the global pandemic has proven, capacity building not only for indigenous peoples, but equally important, implementers, including the states and the accredited entities, are tantamount to helping build a better world for everyone. So you would want to look at paragraph 96 of the policy uh, and paragraph 97 of the policy so that uh, uh, states may request this readiness support to help uh, to enhance their capacity to implement this policy. The second aspect I'd say which is also very crucial is maybe um, looking a little bit more about um, not just uh, safeguarding the rights of Indigenous people but also um, ensuring benefits so, so that um, the good part of the policy that the Indigenous peoples um, knowledge, for example, is actively engaged. The Indigenous Peoples Advisory Group enable Indigenous peoples to take charge by connecting them with various policy actors to ensure funding for green projects that are important to them. I think the key word here is partnerships. These would usually take place through this network of accredited entities and also as well with their um, the, the GCF focal points country. Building those relationships are very important. By working closely with Indigenous peoples, national designated authorities and focal points help promote the Indigenous peoples' interest. So as the Indigenous peoples' focal point, well, I'm basically here at the Green Climate Fund to try and help by A, making sure that these partnerships with Indigenous peoples happen, and not just in a sense of um, because they're there and vulnerable and need extra protection, but because um, we on the ground know what's really happening. And as Indigenous peoples, we know the, the real situation and it's really trying to bring that dialogue a little bit closer with the people who, are, who, are, who have plans and proposals to implement good things in the communities. Such mechanisms have contributed to the significant progress made in terms of pushing for the rights and opportunities for Indigenous peoples. And as long as we persist, we will be able to get people from the governments who will also agree to that and finally put in place uh, instruments that will protect those rights. The Green Climate Fund Indigenous Peoples Policy builds on the strength of the Indigenous Peoples communities. It sets an example on how empowering communities can empower nations in this fight against climate crisis. The role that Indigenous peoples play in fighting climate change is for them to uh, strengthen their systems of adapting and, uh, and mitigating climate change. So they have to tell the world about the knowledge that they have, the, experience, the practices that they have in terms of contributions to mitigating climate change.